Hey everybody, in this video we're going to be showing you a fantastic method of painting a Chaos Cultist for Warhammer 40,000 by Games Workshop. And for a bit of fun what we're going to do is paint it in a colour scheme that shows that this guy is a devout follower of Nurgle. So what we're going to do is start out by showing you some great tricks that you can do just using green stuff to really give the feel of a follower of the God of Decay on your miniature by doing things like boils and a maggot. And then we're going to show you how to paint the miniature from start to finish, featuring some great techniques for the skin especially, showing you how to do things like bruises and sores, all that sort of thing. We hope you enjoy it and we'll see you at the desk. Before we start painting our Nurgle cultist, the first thing we're going to do is a little bit of converting to it and really some sculpting because what we want to do is build up that Nurgle character. So what we're looking at doing here is sculpting some boils and a giant MAGA out of some green stuff. Now the green stuff I've got to use here is from the Army Painter. So here it is, I'm using this one, there's loads of different types available. With it what you need to do is just cut out a small piece that you're going to use of both the yellow and the blue. So I've got mine just here, so you can see this is the piece I've cut out and what I've done is made sure there's more yellow than blue because the blue's a bit tougher so if you have a bit more yellow it's a bit easy to manipulate it. Now luckily this pack has more yellow than blue anyway so it's ideal but what we need to do first of all is remove that central part just there where they're touching because that little strip right there has cured. Now on small scale sculpting like this that will really show up so we've got to get rid of it. So first thing to do is just cut it out. What I've got for this is a sculpting tool. Here it is. You can see you've got a bladed side and a pressing side on the other part down there. Just using the bladed side all you've got to do is cut it out. So it's just a matter of making sure you line up there like that and just slice out that middle piece. So just press down and get rid of that. So there we go, we've got our blue. And then same on the yellow, just making sure you do go a distance in to make sure there's none of it sort of pressed in there. You can see it's still a little bit of blue showing there, so we've got to get rid of that too. So there we go. And with that all removed then, what we can then do is start mixing these together. So that excess waste is removed, just a matter of getting both of these, and then all you've got to do is just start mashing them together. So just press them in like that, start manipulating them around, keep pressing them, keep on going until you get an even green throughout. And here we have our ball of green stuff. The next thing we need to do with it is start to roll it into the shape we need, which is going to be a thin sausage. So what we need to do is just start working it down on either side, really pressing it down so that it becomes quite narrow. We're looking to bring it all the way down so it starts to become around about a millimetre in diameter. So really, really go at it, bring it right down. You can see I've actually got quite a lot of green stuff here, which I don't need just for one miniature. But if you're doing lots of Nurgle miniatures like this, it's always a good idea to get lots of this prepared because then you've got loads to pick from as you're doing your unit. So we want to keep on bringing it down even thinner than this, all the way down to getting to about this sort of thickness here, you see. So it's getting very, very narrow now. There we go. That's the sort of thing that we're looking for, about that sort of size. So it's about a millimetre or so in diameter. So with that prepared, what we're now going to do is start by doing some boils. And for this, we need to cut some pieces. We're looking to cut a part that's about as long as it is wide. So you're going to get a very sort of squarish kind of piece at the end of it. So you're looking for about this sort of size in this case. Just need to chop it down like that with the blade of your sculpting tool. And there we go, we've got our little bit of green stuff on the end just there. Now with modern miniatures that are made of plastic, what you'll find is the plastic is so smooth that actually it's really difficult for the green stuff to stick to it and it can just keep on coming off as you're trying to sculpt on it. So to help it, what you can use is a little bit of super glue. You don't need very much, in fact the less the better. So actually what I'm going to do for this is use a pin to apply it to our green stuff. See what I've got here is a piece of cardboard which I've got a dollop of super glue on there and what I'm going to do is get an old pin and just use it to get a little bit of glue on the tip of it. So just dip it in there like that so we get some glue on there. And then with this, what we need to do is get it onto our green stuff. So I've got the green stuff right here. What I'm going to do is just very carefully dot a little bit of that glue onto the back of it. So just a little bit like that there, just being careful not to actually stick it to the pin. And then what we can do is apply it to the miniature. So we're going to put it on the shoulder just there. What I'm going to do is place it on there like that, let that glue start to grab and then leave it. So it looks a bit weird right now, but the glue is sticking on there so it's going to stay in place as we sculpt it. So whilst that's drying, what we can do now is take a look at the tool that we're going to be using to actually sculpt with, and that is this. This is a clay shaper. You get them in all sorts of shapes and sizes. You can see it looks like a paintbrush, but it's actually got a rubber nib on it instead, so it's perfect for sculpting. If you're going to be doing green stuff, definitely get some of these. What we need to do though is make sure the green stuff doesn't actually stick to this. So to do that, a great thing to get hold of is some of this. It's E45 cream, and that's what I'm going to use here. 
All you need to do is just get a little bit of this onto your finger, so a small amount like that will do, and then just get the tool and just apply it to it. And once you've got that on there, it's no longer going to stick to anything, so we're all ready to go. So with that done, what we can now do is go back to the miniature, which by this point that super glue should have dried. So here it is, and then it's just a matter of manipulating the green stuff into the shape we want. So I'm just going to start by pressing down the sides, just working it down like that, bringing it down to the skin. And you can see how a tool like this is ideal because it's very easy now to make it flush with that flesh. We can just go around there like that, just gently pushing it down. And you can see by doing this, we now get our boil. And there we go, as easy as that, we've got a boil. And you can see I've sculpted a second one on there because when it comes to boils, the question arises is what's worse than a boil or one that's burst is worse. So what we're gonna do with the other one is show you how you can make it look like it's burst. So first of all, just sculpt your boil in the same way that we've just shown you. And then what you need to do is either get hold of a needle or a tool like this one. This is a dentist tool. You can see it's basically a needle on a handle, so it's nice and easy to hold it. So get these quite easily online and they're great for sculpting again. Just bear in mind the end of that is sharp. So if you're a youngster, do be careful. Yes, I have stabbed myself many, many times on this. Over over the years. But it's great for this sort of thing because what we can do with it is first of all just angle it over the top of that boil straight down at it and then you can go in there and just start to go around and just gently widen it. So you can see I'm just doing a little round motion like this just to open it up a little bit like that and once you've got it open it's then time to switch to your clay shaper and with this just go straight down top of it and using the end of it just gently push it a bit further and there we go we've now got a burst boil. Once you're happy with those boils, the next thing we're going to do is to add a giant maggot onto it. And we're going to go for quite a large one here because it is Nurgle, but you can go for any size you want. To do it, what you need first of all is a sausage of green stuff, which I've got just there. So it's just the same roll that we made earlier. I've just cut a larger part of it. And like before, I just glued it onto his back to make sure it's secure. And what we need to do with this is start by sculpting the actual general shape of it. So what I've got first of all is the clay shaper. With this, what we want to do is just start pressing it down so it's affixed a bit more to his back, just making sure that we don't smooth it too much. We still want a bit of a ridge there, but you just want to help just almost cement it down to the back, just make it a bit more secure, just bringing it down. Then on the ends, what we need to do is just taper it. So just gently bring it to a point, just start to round it out there like that and just bring it down to that point. Same on the other side. So on this one, you can see it's a bit of a larger area we've got here. So just a bit more work pressing that down. And there we go. And as we go down, you may find that you get some quite large flat pieces of green stuff that are excess. So look at the very top there, there's quite a large bit. So what I'm going to do is just press that down a little bit more like that. Switch to my sculpting tool with the bladed side on it and just gently just remove that away. So just scrape that off. So there we go. Same with that little excess bit that we've got just there. There we are, then back to the clay shaper just to finish that at the front. So just gently bringing that to almost a point, just rounding it out. And there we go. So we've got the general shape of it there. Next thing to do then is to add the ridges on the back. So for this, I've got the sculpting tool again. I'm using the bladed side, just to make sure it's clean first of all. And with this, just gently go down, just dotting a few lines down it just to get those ridges going down its body. Just gently, just pressing it into the green stuff there like that all the way down and there we go. Now the last thing to do is to add in a lamprey star mouth and for this we're just going to switch the dentist tool and using that needle point just going at the end and again widen it out just like we did with the burst boil. Just gently open that up like that to give the impression of that mouth and there we go we've got one giant maggot on the back. So there we are. So now it's just a matter of carrying on, just doing as much as you want. And all these techniques are just to give you an impression as to what to do. It's up to you, of course, exactly how much you do here. But when you are happy with it, you've got to leave that green stuff to dry. Now, it can take about five to six hours, but just to be safe, I'd recommend you leave it overnight. And that's what we've done with one that we made earlier. So this is the cultist we're going to be painting. Here he is. So you've got a whole host of boils on this guy, including one in the shape of the symbol of Nurgle on the front just there. We've got a little maggot friend as well on his back, just crawling out just there. And so we're happy with that. And so now we can start under coating this model. So what I'm going to do is take it outside and spray it with Mechanica Standard Grey. Then when we come back, we'll start painting. And here we are, the model's been undercoated, and so now we're ready to start painting. And for that classic Nurgle feel, what we want to go for here is lots of sort of like olivey green kind of colours, like dirty greens, and also some dirty pale colours that are kind of ivory-like, so that classic combination for Nurgle. And because of the skin here, what we're going to do with that is make it really pale and really gross looking. So it means for the robes instead, what we want to go for is a green. So here I'm going to use some Death Guard green, and to apply it, go for a good medium-sized brush for the base coating. What I've got here is a medium layer brush from Citadel. And as ever, what we need to do is just get some of this ready on the palette 
palette, thin down with a little bit of water because it's a little bit too thick straight out of the pot to make sure it's nice and smooth before we apply it. Now with this colour, going into it, just be aware that this is quite a thin paint. So when you first put a few coats on, you'll find it is quite translucent, but don't worry about that. Just remember multiple thin coats will ensure you get that smooth finish, which is what we want here. So once it's ready, it's just a matter of applying it and you'll see straight away it is, a, well, very translucent. So it's just a matter of letting it dry, then applying a second and then a third thin coat before you move on to the next stage. Now, as you're doing this, don't worry about being neat on anything. It's just a matter of getting the robes because all the other details will base coat as we come to them and so neaten up as we go along. With those many thin coats applied, you can see now we've got the green on the robes. And so what we're going to do now is move on to base coating all the metallics on the miniature. And here we're going to start out with the silver and we want a dark silver for this. So I'm going to use some Surcoat silver. But if you want to go for a Citadel paint, then something similar to it would be Lead Belcher. Now after this, we then need to pick out the bronze details for a bit of variety in the metallics. And for this, I'm going to use some Balthazar gold. But we'll start out with Surcoat silver. And with this, just need to give it a good shake, of course, and then just get some onto the palette. So. See a little dollop of it, and there we go. And then to apply it, I'm going to stick to that medium layer brush. But at this stage, you might want to have a smaller one in hand just for some finer details. It's really your choice. But as you're base coating this, you need to be careful of those green robes that we've done so far. So as ever, make sure the paint's nicely thinned down. So you've got that control over it. So bring it down to about that point there. And it's just a matter of looking for any silver detail at this point and blocking it in. So for example, some armor plating like this one we got just here. Just want to paint all of this with this color. And as we're doing this, just being careful as we get close to the green, just taking our time around around there then carrying on. Now on the body on these miniatures you often get lots of metal plugs and things. So for example there's one here, make sure it's get those at this stage. As for the staples that are holding some of the skin together like that one down there, don't worry about that for now. We'll just pick that out later on when we move on to the highlights. Once you're happy with that silver, you're then ready to move on to Balthazar Gold to pick out some more details. And with this, generally it's just smaller areas that we're looking for to add a bit of variety to the metal. So look for little trinkets like this one down here, for example, but also on larger parts if you want to break it up, like on the weapon here, by doing the half this way, adds a bit of variety and a bit of interest to these details. Once you're happy with those metallics, you're then ready to move on to base coating the other details on the miniature. And here, what we're going to do is start out by base coating all the leather. I'm going to do this really dark, so an off black to get a nice contrast to some of the lighter colors we're going to use. So in this case, go for an off black that we can shade down for some more depth. I'm going to use some Death Reaper for this, but if you want to go for a Citadel one, then Corvus Black is a similar color to it. After that, we'll need some dried bark, and this is going to be to base coat the trousers. And then we're going to move on to some other colors. First of all, some Dragon Fang, for which if you want to use Citadel again, go for Zandri Dust here. This is going to be for the horns on his helmet. Helmet. And then finally, what we need is some Rakarth flesh, and it's going to be for that great big maggot on his back. But first of all, what we need is some Death Reaper, and to apply it, I'm sticking to that small layer brush because I already got some here on my palette. As ever, we just need to make sure it's nicely thinned down, and then it's a matter of base coating all the leather details we can find. So, for example, we're looking at things like his boots down here, and as you're applying this, just really take your time as you get close to those metallic parts that we've done so far. But also, we want to look out for some smaller features such as the belt, and this is why I got this smaller brush. So, I'm to very carefully move in to pick this out. Once you've finished with the black, you're then ready to move on to a brown. And here I've got some dried bark. And with this, I'm just looking to base coat the remaining clothes. So in this case, it's going to be the trousers. Once that's done, we're then ready to move on to some dragon fang. And this is going to be for the bone details, which in the case of this miniature are going to be the horns just here. So we just want to make sure we base coat all of them, being careful of that metal that appears on either side. And then finally, we're ready to move on to Rakarth Flesh, and this is to base coat the great big maggot that we've got just here on his back. And with that, we've now finished applying all the base coats onto the miniature, which can all use the same wash at the same time. And here what we want is a dark brown wash to get that earthy, grubby feeling, so perfect for Nurgle. In this case, what I'm going to use is some Battle Mud wash, but if you want to go for Citadel, Agrax Earth Shade is the colour to use here. Whatever you choose, what you need is a good large brush to apply it. I have here a monster brush from the Army Painter. And what we're looking to do is to be generous in applying this all across the miniature. So all the colours we use so far, obviously we've not done the skin yet, so don't worry if it happens to catch that, because we'll need it up later, but everything else needs a good coat over the 
top of it. So for example, if we start around here, all we want to do is paint it all over so it settles into the recesses and gives that depth and definition and also stains it a little bit to make it look a little bit grubby. Now, when you're applying it like this, do be careful exactly how much you're putting on because you can see I'm being generous here, but you do have to keep an eye on how it settles because it will tend to run towards the bottom of the model. And if you're not careful, it can really sort of build up and be too much, especially on smooth areas like robes. So for example, if I put along there like that, you can see it all runs down towards the bottom and we get a great big blob just there. Now, if it dries like that, that'll look really horrible. So if you spot that happening, just use your brush like a sponge, just soak it away and redistribute it elsewhere around the miniature. Now, once you have painted it all over these colors, give it plenty of time to dry. It's gonna take around about 45 minutes before you're able to move on to the next stage. That wash is now completely dry, given that shading and definition on the miniature. And in some places it has gone a bit murky, which of course sounds like it should make sense on an angle miniature, but we are gonna brighten up some of that a little bit later on and make it a bit cleaner to help it pop out a bit more. But before we do that, what we're now gonna do is move on to the skin. And remember earlier on, we talked we're gonna go for a very pale and healthy appearance here. This is gonna give a really nice contrast to overall what so far is quite a dark color scheme. So a nice combination of the two here. And for this, what we need to do is start out with a base coat of Rakarth flesh. So this is going to give that really pale, clammy, horrible kind of appearance that we're going for it because it's ideal color for it. To apply it, I'm still using that small airbrush from Citadel, but any smaller brush like this will do. The reason why you need a smaller one here is because this can be quite intricate as we're blocking around all the details we've got so far. So as ever, make sure you use the palette, get that paint thinned down with that bit of water so it's flowing well from your brush. Make sure it's not overloaded with too much. And then it's just a matter of taking your time blocking in all the skin. So we're looking for all the areas like around here. And all we want to do is just very carefully start painting all of it, including over all the boils and things at this stage. The base coat's been applied and you can see just what a nice contrast it gives to all those other colors. And well, with that done, we can now move on to getting some shading on here to give it some definition. And for the skin here, what we want to go for is a color like Reichlin Flesh Shade for it. It's a nice sort of chestnut color. You might be thinking that's maybe a bit too warm for the cold clammy scheme that we're going for here, but we do need a bit of warmth to it because this guy isn't quite dead yet. He's not a zombie, though he is probably on his way to being that. But this is gonna give that subtle bit of warmth after we've done all the layering and things on top of it. So what we need to do is to apply it all over the skin. And I'm actually gonna use a small layer brush for this, which would normally would be quite small for this kind of thing. But the reason is because as you'll know by now, the flesh is quite intricate on this model. So we need that control and a small brush is gonna help out doing that. Still, what we want to do is get a little puddle there and then load it with a generous amount on the brush. And then it's just a matter of painting this directly over the skin and the boils, all these details. We just want to wash them all over like this, letting them settle in the recesses, pushing it around to around about this sort of strength so that it dries with the correct strength for what we need. So just move it to here, then give it around about 20 minutes to dry. That wash is now completely dry and you can see it's given that slight warmth to the skin, but also it's given it lots of definition, really marking out the muscles, which to be honest, you could just leave it here if you want to and then move on to painting the sores, but it has made it nice and easy for the next step that we're gonna do, which is to layer the skin. And what we're looking to do here is to clean things up a little bit and get things a little bit colder before we move on to our highlights. So to do this, we need to return to rack our flesh and this time we're gonna be much more precise in the application. So I've got to a different brush here. I've got a size zero from Artist Opus, which is a really nice brush, really has got a great point on it, which means it's gonna be nice and easy in this stage. But if you wanna to stick to a Citadel brush, go for a small layer that holds a good point. Whatever you choose, what you need to do is get the paint thinned down, sort of like we did with the base coat a little while ago, but this time, just make it a little bit translucent. So a little bit more water mixed in there, so it's a bit thinner, because here what we want to do is steadily go in with a few coats to build this up. So with this got down to this point, just make sure you don't have loads on your brush. And now what we're looking to do is to focus on the raised up flatter areas of the muscles. So if you take a look on the chest just here, what we're aiming for is things like just along here, just looking for those flat parts in the middle and not going into the corners where more of that wash settled. So we're keeping it darker in those points, but making it a little bit lighter on the flatter areas. So you see, I've just been careful around there, then skipping underneath that pectoral just there and carrying on again on this side. And as I carry on now, it's just making it more stark where the muscle definition is, making it a bit clearer and it's popping out more from a distance. Now, because I'm applying it thinly, it means that what we can do is go in for two coats here, which gives us actually two different strengths of the color because the first one you can see is quite translucent. It's quite thin, but it dries quickly and it means now now, if I go in for a second coat on here, I can focus it and make it a little bit brighter in certain areas. So if I do the second layer down here, you can see it's subtle, but the color gets stronger as we get further down there and gives a nice gradient as we go into the recesses then. So just do the second coat a little bit further away from those darker areas to get that bit more definition.
Once you finish that layering, you're then ready to take things a little bit further and move on to highlighting the skin. And for this, what we now need is a lighter color. So for this, I'm gonna use some Pallid Witch Flesh. And to apply it, go for a really small brush here. I'm using a size double zero from Artisopus, but any small brush like this will do well. With it, what we're looking to do now is to apply this color onto the parts that stand out more. And you'll see straight away on the palette, there's quite a significant jump from this that there was from Rakar Flesh earlier. So when applying this, just bear in mind, it's a good idea to make sure you thin it so it's translucent. And again, look to apply it as a few thin coats. If you find it's a little bit too stark in miniatures, remember you can always mix these together a little bit just to take the edge off. The choice really is yours. But what we want to do is make sure it is thinned and you can see how translucent it is there on the palette. And what we're looking to do then is to aim for the areas that are standing out and basically emphasize them a little bit more. So for example, if we take a look at the arm just along here, what I'm looking for are these areas of muscle, such as just here. I'm looking towards the top where the light's gonna be catching and I'm just gonna be thinly applying it into areas like that. Now you can see because the paint is so translucent, the color's showing through from underneath, which means it's not too stark as I paint on. And it means that just like in that previous stage, what I can do is apply one coat, let it dry, and then apply a second coat to focus the color a little bit more where I want it to be brighter. So if I just follow around the pectoral just along here. You can see this time I'm just going for that little crest just there where the light's gonna be catching as it goes over the top. Also want it a little bit towards the top as well, just here towards that source of light. Now we can go back to where we started on the arm and do that second coat, which we can focus a little bit finer. And so this way we're getting more of a gradient going from light to dark all the way around. And with that, the pale skin is now highlighted. And so we can now move on to doing the really fun bit, which is going to be to add in all the gross bits on that skin. And to do this, we're gonna do some staining, but before we do any of that, what we need to do is paint in the pus that appears on the boils. So for this, what we need is a sort of mustardy kind of yellow. So I'm gonna use some darks and yellow for this. If you wanna go for a Citadel paint, then you're looking at something like Avalanche Sunset. Whichever you choose though, what you need is your small brush again. So I'm still using my size double zero here, and you just need a small amount of this color. And with it, what we need to do is to paint the middle of these boils. So the parts where this color is going to be just beneath the surface of the skin, essentially. So what we're looking at on these ones just here in his belly is going for, well, around about this sort of area just here, just very thinly applied, just building it up so it's stronger towards the middle and just making it really gross and yellow. With that pus applied to those gross big fat boils, we're then ready to move on to the next step, which is to do that staining to add a bit more color to the skin. And first of all here, what we need is a red wash. So I've got some Caribou Crimson, but also got some Lamia Medium, because what I'm gonna do is dilute this and gradually apply a few coats of it so we can control where the intensity of the color is going to be. So first of all, we need to mix this up. And so what I've got here is a size zero brush for it. What we want to do is start out with a roughly 50-50 mix. So we'll start out with Caribou Crimson, just so you can see what I'm doing here clearly. So there we go, two brush holes of that. And then we need some of the Lamia medium. Of course, make sure your brush is clean before you pick this up so you don't contaminate it. And what this is going to do is give us a paint that's still going to have the same properties, so still dry smoothly, just be a little bit weaker. So as we mix them together, you can see now it becomes much more diluted. So that's the sort of thing what we're looking for, that sort of strength of paint. And with it, all you need to do is just load up some on your brush, and then we're looking for areas that are going to be a bit more sore. So around these boils is a really obvious example. So we've got this one on the shoulder just here. What we want to do is wash it directly over the top of it, letting that color really build up in the recess around it so we get that pinkish hue. And then what we want to do is just wash the brush, just make sure it's damp, and just use it to smudge the paint a little bit around it just to draw it out onto the surrounding skin, which will make it fade into it. Now, other great places you can do this are going to be plugs that are going into the skin. So you can see there's these one going down the back. So what we want to do is just apply it over areas like that just to get that tonal variation once again. And you can see it's subtle, but this is ideal because we can build it up from here. But like before, just make sure your brush is damp and washed and just draw it out a little bit on either side. You can also do it on areas like scars and around the eyes is a great place as well. That mix is dry, and so now we can move in for a second coat with the exact same mix, so still Caribou Crimson and Lamia Medium, but this time as we apply it, you can see the red is much stronger. So this way, what we can do is focus it on the parts where we want to appear more sore, and we can still get that really nice gradient from where it's really reddish and pinkish, moving to the paler skin beyond. The second coat's now completely dry and you can see we've got suitably really sore looking areas around all those sores and plugs and things. And so now what we're gonna do is add another color to it, this time a purple for a bit more like a bruising sort of effect. And if you want to do this now, what you need is a purple wash. So I'm gonna use some Druki Violet for this. And then what we need is that Lamy Medium once again, because what we're gonna do is the same process as what we did with the previous color, using that medium to dilute the paint so it's not quite so strong as it is straight out the pot, because it's a very strong color, this one. So again, we want roughly 50-50, so I get some of that medium. 
and mix those together. And we're looking for quite a diluted version of it, bringing it to around about this sort of point here. And then it's just a matter of applying it wherever you might want to have some bruises. Now with this, it's a good idea to be a little bit more subtle than we were with the red because you don't want to overdo it and make it too colorful. But just look for areas on patches of skin where you might want to be bruised or perhaps where armor's rubbing against the skin. So for example, on the back of this armor plate, just around here where it disappears under there, same on the back of the hand. Now like with the previous stage, what you can do is make it stronger if you want to. If you do, just let this first coat dry and apply a second coat over the top just to make it more intense in the areas where you want the purple to be stronger. And there we are with those washers applied. You can see now that little bit of variation we got on the skin, making it look really, really gross. As you've seen, doing this is really easy and really fun. Just bear in mind, it's very easy to get too carried away with it. So once you're happy with it, be sure to stop there. So with that done, what we're now gonna do is return to the boils and make them appear like they're just about to burst. And for this, what we need is a sort of yellowish bone color. What I've got is some Shabti bone for this and to apply it, stick to your small brush. I'm still using the size zero here. With this, all we need to do is get a small amount of the palette and really thin it down quite a bit. So it's very translucent, bring it right down to about that sort of point there. Then just remove the excess off on some tissue so you don't get, have, well, you don't have any on there. Then just load up a small amount so you just got a very small amount of this paint on your brush. And with it then, all we need to do is apply it lightly to the top middle of each of these boils. So this one, for example, just gently apply it there. And what you get is a nice highlight on the very top of it. And with that, the boils that haven't yet burst are complete, but they are, of course, still those ones that have burst open. Now, these we're gonna do a little bit more to, but before we can do that, what we need to do is go through all the highlighting of the miniature. And before we can highlight it, what we need to do is a little bit of layering. So we've got two colors here we need to do layering with. First of all, we're gonna to return to Death Guard Green for that green fabric, and then we need some Shabti Bone. This is going to be for those horns. Now, first of all, we need Death Guard Green, and to apply it, I'm actually gonna to stick to my size zero brush here. And with it, what we're looking to do is layering much like we did on the skin, where we're looking to thinly apply this onto the more raised up areas of the fabric whilst avoiding the recessed creases. So make sure you get that paint thinned down, bearing in mind, remember this paint is quite a thin one, so you will have to do two coats here. I'm looking to bring it to about this point here. And with that prepared then, what we need to do is start identifying these areas that we need to pick out. So if you have a look at the robes just down here, you can see we've got these very defined darker recesses. What we're aiming for are the parts that are lighter. So these more raised up areas such as down here, and where it's darker and in shadow and more of that wash settled in it, just skip past those and carry on again on the other side. Once that's done, we can then move on to a shabti bone to layer the horns. And with this, we've got a particular application. So go for a smaller brush. I'm still using my size zero here. And when layering it this time, do it in lines running down the length of the horn. Just gradually put on it in one direction like this, steadily building it up. Because this way, what you get is the impression of these very subtle lines going down the horn, giving the impression of that growth of them. So gradually work your way around building it up and not going quite down to the bottom so that they stay darker at the bottom, but go lighter towards the top. The layering's now done, and so we're ready to move on to those highlights. And we're gonna start out with that green fabric. And for this, what we need is just a lighter green than what we used for that mid-tone for the base coat that we had earlier on. Here, what we're gonna go for is some Nurgling green. And to apply it, I'm sticking to that size zero brush. And with this, what we're looking to do is to apply this color onto the parts of the fabric that stand out from the rest. So the tops of creases, the edges, any rips, tears, that sort of thing. So to get it ready, just make sure you thin it down. And this time, we're really looking for it to flow easily from the brush. So there's a bit of a balancing point. You don't wanna over thin it so it goes out of control, but you definitely need to make sure it flows well from your brush. And at this point, it's looking okay if I play around with it there. What I'm gonna do though is remove excess often some tissue and just get a little bit fresh. And then using this, let's try painting a few lines. And what we're looking for is it to just keep on flowing from the brush. Now it's looking a little bit weak at that point. So what I'm gonna do is just bring a, a bit more of the pigment back into it. So there we go. And again, just set up just like we did before, removing the excess off and then drawing up a little bit fresh and trying again. And this time, the line's staying stronger for longer, so I'm much happy with that. So with that ready then, what we need to do is just bring the bristles to a fine point, and then we're looking for the edges there on that green fabric. So, for example, this one down the front here, because it stands out quite a bit, what we can actually do is approach with the side of the brush, and at about a 45 degree angle from the flat, just gently skim along it like this, and you see we get that bright green line going all the way along the edge and on the top of the crease. So all the way along like that, same on the hem, where again we can reach with the side of the brush, just follow it all the way around there like that. Now you won't always be able to use the side of your brush in that way because sometimes it just simply won't be able to access the part you're doing. So for example, these creases down here. So in this case, we need the tip of the brush, just look for the very peak of the crease. So along here and in a downward sweeping motion, just follow it down just to get a highlight going across the top of the fabric there like that.
And with that, the green fabric is now highlighted. And so we can move on to the next stage, which is going to be to highlight those metallics. And so here we need two colors. First of all, we're going to use Stormhost Silver for all the silver detail. And then for all that bronze, we're going to use some Psychorax bronze. But first of all, we need Stormhost Silver. And to apply it, again, go for your small brush. I'm using the same as the previous stage, so that's size zero once again. And here, what I'm looking to do is to pick out all the sharper edges on the metal details that are silver. So what we need to do is get the paint thinned down so it's that easy flowing consistency, but again, not too thin so it flows out of control. So you just need to find that balancing point. It's gonna be kind of like this. And again, just test it on the palette to see how well it flows from your brush, just to make sure it's going nicely. And I'm happy with that. So ready to load up properly, make sure I've got a fine point on the brush, and then we're looking for all those corners. Now, again, what we want to do is wherever possible, use the side of the brush to skim along the edges, like on the bolt pistol just here to get that highlight on that sharp corner, just making sure we're halting the brush at about 45 degrees from the flat to get that highlight there. But a lot of the time you simply won't be able to do that because it's too hard to access those areas, like this little chaos star just here. So in this case, just angle so you're painting downwards towards yourself and just follow that edge all the way along using the tip of the brush just making sure you're really bracing your hands together so you're nice and steady and just take your time as you follow it around. I finished highlighting all the silver and also at the same time, I just use the silver to pick out those little staples in the skin, such as that one just down there too. And with that done, we're now ready to move on to Psychorex bronze to highlight all the bronze detail using the same technique. So again, wherever possible, use the side of the brush, but if you can't quite reach with that, remember just use the tip of it, just very gently applying it to pick out all those raised surfaces and edges. And there we are, the metals are all highlighted. And so what we can do now is move on to highlighting the other colors on the miniature. And for this, we're gonna start out with all that black for which we need a dark gray. So here I'm gonna use some Mechanica standard gray. With that done, we can then move on to doing a final highlight on the horns using some Screaming Skull. Then that maggot on the back, we can highlight that with some Rackard Flesh. Finally, we need to highlight the trousers and here we need a nice medium brown. So for this, I'm gonna use some Gorthor Brown. But first of all, we need Mechanica standard gray and to apply it, I'm still using that size zero brush. And with this, what we're looking for are those sharper edges again, but this time on all that black detail we did. So all that leather, things like the belt, the boots, that sort of thing. So like before, we just need to make sure the paint's nicely thinned down and under control, just making sure too the brush isn't overloaded. And then it's just a matter of looking for those corners. So for example, on the boot down here, what we want to do is to look for the ridges. We've got one just in the front of the toes. So we just want to go there and these creases along here, just follow along the top of them, just to help them stand out. Once you finish that on the black, you're then ready to do a final highlight on the horns using some Screaming Skull. And with this, what we want to do is replicate what we did earlier with those lines, only this time focusing it towards the tips. So on this one, we're looking at this sort of area around here. And on this one, it's just a little bit closer to the point. So we're looking at about this sort of area here. With that done, we're now ready to do a little highlight on the maggot on the back here. And for this, all we need to do is return to Rakar Flesh. And with it, we're just looking at just building up some of these ridges once again, just with a line, just across the length of it like this, just working our way down, just to help pick out that texture. And finally, we're ready to move on to Gorthor Brown. And with this, we're going to be highlighting the trousers. And with this, what we're looking for are the tops of the creases again, but also the rips and tears. So for example, there's a little just rip at the very front here. And we just want to go around that outer circle of it. So very gently around there, but also we're looking for the creases around the areas like the knee and on the back here, just the very top of them and follow along each one. And with that, all the highlights have been applied. And so now what we can do is move in for some final small details. And the first of those is going to be to paint the bionic eye on this miniature. So for this, all we need is a pure white to begin with. And you can use any pure white you want to, but I'm gonna use some white star for this. But then what we need is a bright red contrast paint. So Blood Angels Red is what I'm gonna use for this. But first of all, what we need is that white star and to apply it, go for a small brush again, any you're comfortable with. I'm still using my size zero, but feel free to go for a small one if you want to. And with it, all we're looking to do is to paint a little dot of this color right in the middle of that eye. So you don't need uh, very much of it. Just make sure you've got a fine tip on your brush though, so you've got that point. And with this, all you then need to do is brace your hands so you're really steady, gently move in and just apply that little white dot right into the middle of the lens. So we're looking at right in here. Once you've got that bright white, the next thing to do is to get the Blood Angels red and thin it down with just a little bit of water so it's a bit diluted. And with this, all you need to do is paint it directly over the whole lens of the eye so that it's brighter in the very middle.
And with that eye painted in, the miniature is very nearly finished now. And in fact, you could just leave it here and base it if you wanted to. However, if you'd like a little bit of a missed opportunity because with a Nurgle miniature, doing some final effects to make it look even more gross is really fun and really easy to do. So we're gonna do a number of those now. The first is going to be just to shift the color of the horns a little bit to so make them look a little bit decayed and a bit rotten. And for this, what we need is a sepia wash. I've got some serif and sepia for this and to apply it, I'm sticking to the same brush, still a size zero. What I'm gonna do is just get a bit of this onto the regular palette and I'm gonna thin it down with some water. Now water's absolutely fine for the sort of application that we're doing here because of the texture that we've already got for it to grab onto as we apply it. But what we want to do is just get it thin so it's not quite so strong as it is straight out the pot and then just make sure you only have a small amount on your brush so that we can thinly glaze this on. And what we want to do is just apply it directly over these horns, so over the bone. So on this one, for example, just thinly apply it so it doesn't build up too much in one area and you can see it just shifts the color ever so slightly, makes it look just that little bit rotten. And with that, you can see now we've got that nice decaying appearance on the horns. And so what we can do is move on to the next effect, which is going to be to add some rust to the miniature. For this, what we need is some scrag brown, which I'm gonna heavily thin down with water to turn it almost into a wash, really. It's only very much of it. I'm still using the size zero brush for this too. Just want to get some onto your palette, onto the regular one, then add loads of water to it to make it very, very runny. I want to bring it right down to about this sort of consistency here. See, very, very inky. And with it, just get a small amount on your brush, and then really it's entirely up to you exactly how much of this you add. What we're looking for are corners on metallic details. So for example, this armor plating here, what you do is just start running it into these areas and just letting it flow into them and stain the metal. And you can see it just turns it slightly orange because a really nice appearance of rust. So again, around rivets and things like that, just there, it's a really nice effect that is easy to build up and looks great. Now, if you want to, you can go more heavy on certain areas. And that's what I want to do here on the bolt pistol, just to separate the casing from the mechanical parts behind it a little bit. In this case, I'm just going to be a little bit heavier, just letting it build up a bit more. So it almost turns the gun slightly orange on those raised up areas there like that. And there we are, the rust is complete. And so the next thing we're gonna do is add two more effects, starting out with a little bit of verdigris on those bronze details before we move on to some Nurgle's rot. And this is going to be going back to those burst boils, gonna have it trickling out of them and make them look really disgusting. But first of all, what we need is that nylac oxide and to apply it, still using the same brush here, still the size zero. With this again, I'm just gonna get on the palette and thin it with just a little bit of water so it's not quite so strong as it is straight out the pot. So a little bit of a dilution there. Then make sure you only have a small amount on your brush and using the tip of it, what we're looking to do is to introduce some little bits of this color onto that bronze detail in corners where you get moisture collecting. So for example, on this little belt just here, you can see we've got those rivets. Around those is a great place to do this. So just dotting into areas like that on either side. There we go. And also we've got this bit of armor on his leg. In this case, we're looking at corners so just around these spikes. And again, you just dot it into those areas to give that little hint of color in those parts. Once you're happy with that verdigris, you're then ready to move on to some Nurgle's Rot. And this is straight out the pot, so not thinned down at all, but I am using the same brush. With it, what I'm gonna do is just let it build up inside these burst pustules here, these boils that we've got open. So we really want to fill that in with some of that there like that. And then I'm just going to have some of it just trickling down from them like it's been leaking since it's burst. So just trickling down like that, building it up so we get the, the effect of it just running down the body. And here we go, we've got those disgusting burst boils. Now the Nurgle's Rot, I did apply a second coat after the first one just to build it up a little bit more to help it stand out. But you can see it looks disgusting and it's really easy to do. And I also did just a little bit leaking out of that hole in the skin where the maggot's crawling out of just there. And with that done, we're now gonna move on to our final effect, which is to add a little bit of dirt on the bottom of the robes. And for this, the color you use really depends on what sort of base you're going for. And because I'm going for a desert base here, I want sort of a dusty sort of color. So in this case, I'm gonna use some Steel Legion Drab, but if you're going for Mars, you want something red. As I say, it depends on what you're doing. But what we want to do is just gently dry brush this onto the robes. So go for a small dry brush. I have a small dry brush here from Citadel. Just need to get a little bit on the bristles, then use some tissue paper to work it into the brush and remove excess paint. And just keep on going until you're getting about this sort of appearance here on the texture of your tissue paper. Once you achieve that, all you've got to do is just lightly start brushing this towards the bottom of the miniature. So we're looking at about this sort of distance up from the base. Just go back and forth around this area just to get a hint of this color to get that dusty appearance. Now, once you've done this, your miniature is ready to be based. Now, as ever, it's entirely your choice how you base it but in this case as I mentioned I'm going to go for a desert base.
And here we have the completed cultist ready to spread disease and decay. So as you've seen, when it comes to painting Nurgle miniatures, it's actually really fun. Just do a little bit of green stuffing beforehand to add a bit more of that theme to your miniatures. And remember when doing this, just those tricks that we showed you to prevent the green stuff from sticking to the tools. Now, when it comes to painting them, when you're doing that skin, doing all those bruises and things, that's the really fun part. And whilst this might look a bit intimidating when you see the finished result, actually doing it is really simple and really easy. Just make sure that you don't put on too much of that wash at once so that it doesn't become too stark. Because remember, gradually build it up with a few thin coats. So have fun painting your cultists and we'll see you again very soon.